everybody, and welcome into the Shelby County High School Football Show. We're out here at Thompson High School to get you ready for week two of the 2021 high school football playoffs right here in Alabama, and just three teams remain. Two of them going to play each other in a rematch right here on this field behind me at Warrior Stadium this Friday night in the Class 7A Region 3 battle in the quarterfinals of the 7A playoffs. So a big, big matchup for these two teams as Thompson will play host to Oak Mountain in a game that we saw just a few weeks ago near the end of region play. So a big rematch there for a spot in the Class 7A semifinals. One of our big matchups taking place this Friday night in the playoffs, but we've also got the Briarwood Lions in a huge top five battle as they take on number one Clay Chalkville on the road. So a big matchup over there as well as the winner of that game, a strong chance that they can go on and compete for a state championship this season. That would be a huge win for Briarwood. Most people expect Clay Chalkville to be the team that wins the Class 6A state championship this year. So if the Lions can win that game, then there's no telling what's ahead for them with a possible state championship at the end of the season. So two big games to talk about, but we had nine teams total enter the playoffs, a record-setting year for Shelby County with nine teams making it for the first time. Obviously, we're dwindled down to just three now with six teams losing last week, but we want to take a minute, talk about those teams and what they were able to accomplish. Obviously, the 6A classification, we had every team make the playoffs this year locally in Class 6A. Pelham, Calera, Chelsea, and Helena all lose last Friday night, but we continue to see just how close all of those programs are in a historic season here across Shelby County. You look at those teams in general, all of them lost by 10 points or less in the opening round against a very good region. They com- they match up with a very difficult region going into the first round. Chelsea had to play Oxford in the opening round. You look at Pelham, Calera, and Helena, difficult battles with regions from the south as well, and each team loses by 10 points or less. So uh, not the finish that they wanted, but we continue to see these programs move in the right direction when it comes to postseason play as they continue to try to chase down those historic seasons. But nonetheless, what we've seen from Pelham, Helena, Chelsea, Collier the last few years, and especially this season, historic paces that they've been able to keep up and keep going. So we'll see how that continues moving forward for these teams, all well coached uh, going in to the 2022 season next year, building off of even more confidence than they've ever had before, likely in program history. For the Shelby County Wildcats and Montevallo Bulldogs, they also had their season come to an end this past Friday night. The Shelby County Wildcats hosting their first playoff game since 2009 so just a special all-around night there in Columbiana as they got to play host they had an early 14 to 7 lead in the second quarter ended up trailing 21 to 14 at the half just couldn't quite keep it going there in the second half of a difficult matchup with Faith Academy as they lose that matchup but First year under head coach Zeb Ellison, you can see this team kind of turning the page. The defense played the best it's played in several years. The offense kind of slow at times this year, but started to get things going. We'll see where this program is in the future, but we know that Ellison's going to continue to have success in leading this group uh, in future years. And you look at what they did this year to have home field advantage, finish second in your region under uh, a first-year head coach, truly special what they were able to accomplish. And the same thing over at Montevallo, year two under Blake Bourne as the head coach there for the Bulldogs. And the success that they've had the last couple of years, just the first two years under him, to get to the playoffs both years, last year to get to the second round. This year, you have an even more successful season. You just get a little bit more of difficult of a matchup in the first round as they fall to Jackson, number, the number nine team in the 4A classification, a game that was 14-13 to 13 going uh, midway through the third quarter, and Jackson just pulls away late as Montevallo had to take some chances. Uh, Jackson ends up winning that one 44-20. But a special season for the Bulldogs, a special season for the Wildcats, and all of those 6A teams as well. A historic season they played a part in here across Shelby County. But that takes us to this week, the excitement of round two of the playoffs in Class 7A. That means it's the quarterfinal week. We've got two teams right here going to battle behind me in our game of the week between Thompson and Oak Mountain for a spot in the Class 7A semifinals. Good chance that one of the teams, whoever wins, will get a rematch with Hoover there in the semifinals as well. Another region opponents. It's going to be a lot of fun to see what happens in that one. Number five, Briarwood traveling on the road to take on number one, Clay Chalkville as well. We're going to break down both of those games. We're going to start right now with our game of the week right here at Thompson High School. 
Well, how awesome is it that we're guaranteed from Shelby County at least one team in the Class 7A semifinals this year? And for the Thompson Warriors, they're looking to make it five straight seasons that they've made it to at least the semifinals dating back to 2017. So they're on a special run right now. They're looking to three-peat as state champions. They know they have to get through this matchup. Likely another matchup with the Hoover Buccaneers, their only loss of the season, and the number one team right now in the state as the Warriors sit at number two with that three-point loss in region play a couple of weeks ago. But first, got to take care of business here, and it's not going to come easily. We've seen what Oak Mountain can do when they're healthy this season, and they've had an impressive showing under first-year head coach Tyler Crane and what they've been able to do. And you look just back at last week, and what this Oak Mountain team was able to do. Evan Smith went out in the first half early against Thompson in that game late in the regular season, missed the rest of that game, the majority of that game, and then missed the final two regular season games. This team put up just seven combined points the final three weeks of the regular season without him and were shut out twice in that span. They come back last week and they put up 38 points against the number five team in the state, James Clemens, and they pick up a 38 to 35 win on a last second 32 yard field goal from Garrett Murphy. But in addition to Murphy playing hero there in the final four seconds with that game winner to pick up the win in a thrilling football game, you look at what Evan Smith did in that game, 400 plus all purpose yards with five touchdowns. He had three uh, on the ground and two through the air from the quarterback position. That's what he means to this offense, and he's going to have to have a special night here on Friday night against the Thompson Warriors to be able to help the Eagles pick up a win, make school history, get to the semifinals of the Class 7A playoffs, which they were so close to doing last year in a tight three-point loss to the Hoover Buccaneers in the quarterfinal, a game where they had some heartbreak. They thought they had a first down late in that contest, at the least would have kicked a game-winning field goal, but felt like they were about to go on a game-winning drive there with a touchdown and uh, a bad spot called them short of a first down. Uh, the whole stadium felt like it was a first down, and that team carried that going into this season. It kind of drove them, motivated them. They wanted their shot at Hoover again uh, in this situation. Instead, they're going to have to take on a team that beat them 48 to nothing a few weeks ago. But that's where you got to build off of having Evan Smith back as your quarterback. If he's able to stay healthy throughout this game, which he's a physical competitor, he's going to try to make plays, and that's where his teammates have to step up and be able to help him make some plays this Friday night because you can't have him running loose the entire game against this defense, which has uh, several Division I recruits up front on the defensive line, in the at the linebacker unit, and in the secondary. So you're going to have to have some help if you're Evan Smith in this game to win this football game. Now, he can try to do a lot himself, and he'll be able to do it at different times, but not sure that's going to be enough to win the game. Your defense is going to have to play sound. You're going to have to have Kay George, Ethan Hammett step up at the receiver position, Trey Vassell at running back. Several others are going to have to play well. But most importantly, if Oak Mountain wants any chance in this game, it's going to come down to the trenches. You're going to be outmanned physically, size-wise, up front on both sides of the ball. So then it comes down to determination and how strong can you play uh, from a heart and desire standpoint with your season on the line because if you want Smith making some of those same plays against this defense, you're going to have to come out, block well, create holes, give him some time in the passing game to find those two receivers that we mentioned, give some time for some other guys in the running back position to be able to make plays in the run game as well. That's going to be big, a big-time key for the Eagles, really on both sides of the ball. And we've seen the defense play well. It's the best defense that they've had in several years. But against the best teams they've played outside of Hoover, where they gave up just 28 points, they've struggled a little bit down the stretch. But that's largely been because the offense hasn't been able to stay on the field and sustain drives until last week. And last week, offense came out and played well for Oak Mountain early in that football game, took a 21 to nothing lead, and that helped the defense not feel as much pressure early in that game. Now, James Clemens made it, came back and made an exciting football game the rest of the way uh, as that one went down to the final seconds and a game-winning field goal there broke the tie for the Eagles to send them to the quarterfinals of the uh, seven-day playoffs for the second year in a row. It's just the first time in school history that they've had back-to-back -back years with playoff wins. So 
Uh, a special showing nonetheless. Special to see Evan Smith come back, lead his team after a couple weeks off. You know he wanted at least one more chance uh, to make some big plays before his high school football season came to an end as a four-year starter. And now he's going to hope for a little bit more magic against one of the top teams in the state. And for the Thompson Warriors, you look at what they've done as well this season. It's just been tremendous on both sides of the football, excluding that second half against Hoover. And that's really the only bad stretch they've had all season is one half of football with their backup quarterback in and some other things injury-wise as well, kind of plaguing them in that game. And so you look at that outside of that game, outside of that second half against Hoover, this has been a dominant football team really the entire season on both sides of the ball. And last week, they didn't flinch at all in a big-time win to open the playoffs against Florence. They went 49-10 to with their backup quarterback, Zach Sims, playing extremely well. Only one incompletion, had more than 170 yards passing with a couple of touchdowns there at the quarterback position, and he's going to be key. If he's the guy again this week, if Connor Harrell can't go this week, which I don't know if we see him the rest of the season or not, uh, my guess is you'll probably try to see him give it a go at some point, whether that's this week, whether if they win, that's the week after against Hoover, trying to get one more shot at them uh, in the semifinals. I don't know, but he's dealing with a, a hand injury to his throwing hand, and so it's difficult. It's going to be difficult for him to be 100% to be able to make some of those big-time plays that you would see from him on a weekly basis. And if not, this team has to rally around Sims and what he's able to do at the quarterback position. And even in that second half against Tuver, a game they led 21-10 to going into the break. They came out in the second half, and they were playing well on that first drive. Those first couple of drives had some great throws from Sims. A couple of them were dropped, and then you started to see the confidence kind of go from the Thompson offense, a confidence that hasn't gone in several years here for the Warriors outside of times where they've had injuries like they did last week. And that's something that you've got to deal with and be prepared for. You look at the state championship last year when Harrell went out then, almost cost him that game, able to make a miraculous comeback and pick up the victory there. But then again this year, you go to your backup in the biggest game of the regular season and just not really prepared from a mentality standpoint of how do we handle if we start to see any sort uh, of adversity, and now they are, though. That's the key. They faced it last year in the state championship. They faced it in that Hoover game, and then now they've had time to prepare their backup quarterback and their players to be ready to play with him, and that's the key. They've got the athletes there all across the board, at running back, at receiver. Take advantage of it. Those guys have to stay confident. They have to keep the morale high there of the rest of the team because if they start to hang their heads and lose that confidence, that kind of transitions throughout the rest of the football team, even over to the defense, which really should never hang their heads as talented as they are. So you come out, you get behind Zach Sims. If he's your quarterback, he played well in the opener of the playoffs last week, just one half, and he was pretty much perfect in that one half. And so they're going to try to build his confidence up. If he has a successful showing on the offensive side of the football, again, you've got Justin Pegues, who's coming off a great performance, did a ton of stuff in that first-round win last week. You've still got Ryan Peppins, who is arguably one of the fastest players in the state. You've got Jalen Ward, another deep downfield target. You've got Brandon Franklin, who's a big guy. If he can protect the football, not only good in the running game, powerful, can take some time off the clock if you need him to, but can be great in the blocking game as well there for the Warriors. So they've still got the talent. They've got a solid offensive line. It's just a matter of trusting in your quarterback, whoever that's going to be at the time, and showing them that you can make plays. If you drop a ball, then it's on you. Get back up to the line of scrimmage. Get ready to go for that next play and show him that you're not going to give up on him as the quarterback, uh, especially if it's Sim still trying to gain some confidence here uh, early in the postseason. But you look at this matchup head-to-head, and, and you look at what these two teams have done all season so far. Thompson obviously won the first game 48 to nothing. That's when they were fully healthy. Evan Smith didn't play the entire game. So how does that kind of change the dynamic this week? If it's kind of flipped in the other way, you've got Evan Smith back and you've got Thompson on their backup quarterback. What does that kind of do to the dynamic of this game? Well, we saw Sims play well last week, so I don't think it really does a ton. And you know this defense of Thompson is motivated because of what happened in that second half against Hoover as they came out and won that game 24-21. to So the defense came into this postseason motivated. Now they know that they're on their backup quarterback uh, likely. And so you get that kind of edge that 
it's on us now. We've got to make a difference. We've got to win this football game for our team. So that's a dangerous thought when you look at what they already have on the defensive side of the football. But so far this season, Thompson, they're scoring 47.1 points per game, giving up just 5.5 points per game. Oak Mountain, they're scoring 23.3 points per game, giving up 21.5 points per game. So you look at that. And, and you've got to find somewhere, one, you've got to make up 48 points from the first matchup. Two, you've got to make a, up a, a ton of points on both sides of the football from an offensive and defensive standpoint. Now, a lot of those offensive numbers skewed by the final three weeks, taking on number one, Clay Chalkville, taking on number uh, one, Thompson at the time, and then also taking on Hewitt Trustville, number 18 in Class 7A without your starting quarterback who's been a four-year starter. So that kind of skewers some of the numbers and the ending to the season there for the Eagles. They're going to be riding a high off of last week's win, did what they wanted to offensively. Coming into this game, Evan Smith gives them a huge momentum boost. So how do you build off of that, try to get some early confidence? And if you look at this first game between these two teams, Thompson came out, had their way offensively. They could have gone into, they would have gone into the half with a large lead regardless uh, of if Evan Smith was healthy or not. But Evan Smith, while he was in, was starting to heat up there uh, early in that game, had a couple of big plays, and then was picked off after a penalty. They had it inside the five-yard line, was picked off uh, there with a, uh, following a penalty to push them back, forced him to throw a pass that he didn't need to throw there in the end zone. And then the next drive gets them back down inside the five-yard line with a couple more big plays, and then a penalty pushes them back. And then he has to roll out of the pocket again, and a late hit gets him injured and out of the game. So if you're Oak Mountain, you already have to play a perfect game. You can't push yourself backwards. If you get inside the 10-yard line, one, you've got to score, but two, you can't commit penalties once you get inside the 10-yard line. You've got to punch those uh, balls in to the end zone and, and take advantage of those opportunities because there's not going to be a ton of them. That would have been 14 points, and then the drive after that, the Oak Mountain defense came out, made some big plays, and actually forced a punt that was uh, not a good punt, set Oak Mountain up deep inside Thompson territory about the 35-yard line, but with their backup quarterback in uh, on the road, first start or first playing action, it, it was difficult to get anything going from there, and that kind of wrote the story for the rest of the night. So they had opportunities in that first half. Likely, uh, without the penalties, if Evan Smith's healthy, they punch in a couple of those scores, and you're looking at a game that was much different, maybe 28, 35 to, uh, to 14 or 21 at the half. So you've got to come out early, try to set that tone, get inside the red zone and punch in some of those opportunities if you want a chance in this football game. Ultimately, I do think they have a little bit more success, Oak Mountain, in this game with Evan Smith back, determined, hungry. They're going to try their best to protect him as best they can uh, because they want him playing this entire game uh, going forward. You know it's probably going to be officiated a little bit closer uh, as well when it comes to the physicality level of the quarterbacks on both sides of the football in this game as well. So you got to take advantage of that. Try to make some big-time plays offensively. I think it'll be a little bit tighter because of that. I do think Oak Mountain can get on the board and this one won't get shut out. Maybe Thompson doesn't get quite to 48. But at the end of the day, Thompson, that's a, that's a tough gap to make up, 48 points in general. And then you look at both sides of the ball. Thompson's the favorite in this matchup, should be able to walk away with a victory and get to the semifinals for the fifth consecutive year and then have a chance once again to try to three-peat as state champions. But this is going to be a hungry Oak Mountain team. They want to do the same thing. They're not going to go down without a fight. That's going to make it a ton of fun. It's always fun when two county teams battle, even more so when it's for a spot in the semifinals of the playoffs. So going to be a blast out here at Thompson High School on Friday night. Can't wait to see this game. I'll be out here covering live from Warrior Stadium. So I'll see you all then. Make sure you tune in. We'll have our Facebook Live pregame show here, kind of breaking down this game and the Briarwood game as well here before the game. So going to be a blast. Can't wait to see you all at Warrior Stadium on Friday night. And that takes us to arguably one of the biggest games of the week. And it's just unfortunate, in my opinion, I'm going to be honest with you, that these two teams have to play in the second round of the playoffs. And you've got other games featuring two teams that aren't even ranked. Uh, it just makes no sense. I don't like seeing this in the second round. I know you're going to have to play the best teams eventually to win a state championship anyways, but this is a game that should be reserved for at the least a quarterfinal matchup, if not a semifinal matchup, as you're looking at number one Clay Chalkville, been the best team in the state in the 6A classification all year, hasn't even been close 
to uh, an argument or debate there as to who the number one team is this season. Uh, Clay Chalkville's just dominated. And Briarwood, they've kind of they've looked good at times. They've looked a little bit inconsistent at times as well, but they've really started to get going. Uh, they're playing some great football. They challenged Mountain Brook the closest anybody has challenged them, out, challenged them outside of Thompson beating them uh, earlier this season. And so Briarwood's still going to give them a tough test, and I think they've got a chance because they're the right team to pull off an upset if anybody's going to beat Clay Chalkville this season. But it's just the fact that they have to play this early in the playoffs, number five versus number one. That's just disappointing because these two teams both could easily get to the semifinals or to a state championship game in any other scenario uh, along the bracket. So uh, disappointing, but going to be a lot of fun at the same time that we get to see these two teams take on each other in a huge playoff matchup as Briarwood has to hit the road to Clay Chalkville. It's a tough place to play. Uh, as well. So going to be interesting to see how this one unfolds. And when you look at what these two teams have done uh, for Briarwood, it's the second year in a row that they've got to take on a top two team in the second round of the playoffs. Last year, they get number two Oxford. They lose that one. Never could get anything going offensively. Defense played well enough early to kind of keep it close, uh, but ultimately just couldn't get enough going on both sides of the ball to keep that game close enough. Now they get the number one team in Clay Chalkville this year. And Clay Chalkville scoring 50.1 points per game, giving up just 10.4 points per game. They've been dominant this season. They've been arguably the best team in the state regardless of classification so far this season. And you look at the offense, they've scored 40 or more in every game and 50 or more five times this season. So the offense playing lights out the entire season. They haven't scored less than 40 points. That's unheard of at the high school level. And they're playing in a decently difficult region as well. They've got Hueytown. They had Jackson Olin. Uh, their closest game was a 57-40 to win against Hueytown. That was their worst defensive showing of the season by far. But outside of that, defensively, they have five shutouts this season. They've given up 14 or less in all but three games and 23 or less in all but that game to Hueytown in a 57 57- to 40 win, uh, but they've also beaten Pinson Valley, the defending state champion. They won that game 42 to 23. They beat Jackson Olin, who's been a very good football team this season, 46 to 14. So that just shows where Clay Chalkville is. They're kind of on a different level this season than everybody else has been. And so, how does Briarwood come in and kind of ruin that rhythm and find a way to upset the number one team? in the second round of the playoffs, and you look at what Briarwood's done, well, their defense is also playing extremely well. This is a defense giving up just 16.6 points per game, and you look at that side of the ball, they've given up 18 or less in the last five consecutive games and in six of their last seven games, also given up 22 or less in all but one game this season, a 42-35 to win against Chelsea in a game that the defense got better as that game went along, especially in the fourth quarter, played lights out there to help the team come back and win that one 42-35 in overtime. So you look at the defense, the way that they've played, and coming into the season, that was the side of the ball that had all of the question marks. They lost so much talent defensively from last year's team, but they're so well coached. Head coach Matthew Forrester kind of leads the defense. He's the former defensive coordinator, still kind of runs that side of the football, uh, and he's been there for years, and he knows how to take care of of business against the best teams in the state and try to shut down some of the best offenses. Um, And it's been successful this year, and they've gotten better as the year goes on. So you're getting this Clay Chalkville team, who most people think is going to win the state championship, at the right time because your defense is playing its best football of the season. They've consecutively uh, done that kind of down the stretch here late in the season. And then you look at what the offense has been able to do. Like I said, they're scoring 337 points per game on the offensive side, so they're not lighting up the scoreboard. It's not nearly as close to the uh, 50 points per game that Clay Chalkville is putting up on the offensive side, but just look back to last week. A good Fort Payne defense. Uh, A lot of people expected that game to be a pretty low-scoring game between Fort Payne and Briarwood. Briarwood comes out, wins at 35-12, to and you look at what they were able to do offensively, and I'll tell you the biggest key to their offense, and that was the return of Nicholas Dyson. He's missed the majority of the season due to an injury, was expected to be their leading receiver on the offense this year. 
He didn't go for most of the season, finally returns in the first round of the playoffs and makes a huge statement with 144 receiving yards, and that takes this team to a new level. That's what gives them a chance this week because now I know you're missing Jay Butler who went out a few weeks ago against Mountain Brook with a season-ending injury. He was kind of stepping up as a big guy they could target out of like a tight end uh, wideout position. Uh, but you go beyond that. Ethan Anderson has stepped up at the receiver position and has given you that second threat. So now you've got Dyson as kind of your number one back in the lineup, now kind of back in shape and ready to go, coming off a 144-yard performance. So you put him out there, then you put uh, Ethan Anderson opposite of him. You've got two threats that they've got to respect at receiver now, which hasn't been there lately for Briarwood. That's been the one key p- missing piece for the Briarwood offense is a downfield threat, even an over-the-middle-of-the-field threat to make some big-time plays in the passing game and take advantage of a four-star quarterback who has a great arm in Christopher Vizina. So now they've got two guys there, and then you throw in the mix Luke Rebels, who was injured in the middle of the season, has now come back and really gotten back into shape and has played well down the stretch. And you've got him who he can run the football, he can catch it out of the backfield, he can catch it downfield. So you've got Three guys who can catch the ball now. You've got a running back who's one of the best in the 6A classification, and you've got one of the best quarterbacks in the state. So those guys are going to have to come out and perform. They're going to have to play up to their talent level. They can't be nervous. They can't be scared. They've got to be confident, and they've got to go out there and simply make plays if Briarwood wants to win this football game. And you've got the offensive line to get it done. It's a very good, physical, solid, sound, good-sized offensive line that can help that side of the football make some big-time plays in this game. And that's going to be the key. Briarwood's going to have to come out and play well offensively. Their defense is going to play well, but this is a Clay Chalkville offense that's going to score some points. And so if you're Briarwood, if this game gets into the th- into the 30s, can you keep up with that offense against one of the best defenses in the 6A classification? And that's going to become the key. I mean, you look at the teams that uh, that they've been able to handle so far this season – Clay Chalkville against Jackson Olin. That's a good team that plays good defense. It's physical. You look at Pinson Valley off a state championship. Not as good this year, but they're still a very talented football team. And you put up 40-plus points in that game. And then you look at that game against Hueytown, and you put up 57. So they've handled good defenses with their offense, uh, even if they've given up some points in those football games. So Briarwood going to have to come out and play well offensively. Defense, though, needs to set the tone early so that this offense can have a chance to get into a rhythm. This defense, if they can come out and get a couple of three and outs or a couple of defensive stops early in the first quarter, give that offense a chance to get into the into rhythm, fill out the Clay Chalkville defense, put up some points there. If they can get a 7-0, 10-0, 14-0 lead in this game, Briarwood going to have a very good chance to kind of roll along, compete because of what they do. This is a team that wants to play more of a methodical style, old school football. They're going to come out while they do spread it around and while they've got a quarterback who can take off with his legs, they want to run the football a little bit more. They want to go on long, methodical drives uh, and take some chunk time off the clock there to kind of slow this thing down and limit the possessions of Clay Chalkville. If you limit their possessions with the defense you have at Briarwood, that's a huge thing. It gives your offense a chance to take long drives, capitalize on those drives, and get a lead in this game. If they can do that, they're going to have a very good chance, and I think they have the best chance of anybody, arguably outside of maybe Mountain Brook, to being able to win against Clay Chalkville because of the style those teams play with a physical nature, like to slow it down, go on long methodical drives. If they have success at it with the talent that they have on their team, Briarwood are going to be right in this football game and a chance to take down the number one team. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be a tall task. Like I said, everybody kind of expects Clay Chalkville to win the state championship this year. So Briarwood are going to have to come out, play perfect football, and execute the game plan. Game plan. That's probably the biggest key is execution in this football game. Head coach Matthew Forrester talked about that after the game last week. It's a game of execution. You know at this point in the season, you know 99% through film, uh, through studying, through practice, you know 99% of what you're going to see on the football field when you take the field on a Friday night. So then it just becomes about executing your game plan and stopping uh, the opposing offense, making plays, finding those holes against the opposing defense. So Briarwood, they're going to be ready to go. It's just all about execution 
at this point in the season. So going to be a blast regardless. I mean, what more can you ask for if you're Briarwood than a chance to take down the top team in the state? And if you do easily become, at that point, a big-time favorite to compete for a state championship the rest of the way as you get into the Class 6A quarterfinals. So going to be a fun one to watch there between number one Clay Chalkville, number five Briarwood at Clay Chalkville this Friday night. A lot on the line, obviously the season on the line for both of these teams, both of which could compete for a state championship. We'll talk about that one more on Friday night with our pregame show as well, live here from Thompson High School. So just a fantastic night of high school football in general as we get close to winding down the season. Hate to see it, but going to be a lot of fun to watch these matchups unfold, including this big one. And that takes us to our SCR Stars of the Week segment. Going to mention some of these te- uh, some of these names for the final time this season. Sad to see that happen, but what a remarkable year it's been covering these athletes, these football teams. And want to give a few of these guys uh, a shout out um, for what they've been able to accomplish. But we're going to start with a couple that are still going to be playing. And right here on this field behind me, I'm going to start with the Oak Mountain Eagles and what they were able to do in the first round of the playoffs against James Clemens. Evan Smith returned and take a bow. My goodness, the kid went off. I shouldn't say kid now. He's about to go to Northwestern. True man. He's going to do good things in college as well. 12 of 17, 182 yards and two touchdowns throwing the football. And then 21 carries for 246 yards and three touchdowns rushing the football. 428 all-purpose yards in that game, his first game back in three weeks after an injury, and he wasn't intimidated at all. And he's going to have to have a duplicated performance of that right here on this field behind me uh, this Friday night. But just good to see him. I mean, everybody that you talk to talks about what a great person, great athlete he is. And so to get him that one last opportunity to try to make some big-time plays and give his team a win as a four-year starting quarterback, Good to see that happen for Evan Smith. We'll see how he performs out here Friday night. Also had the help of two of his top targets, which we talked about earlier in the show that need to step up as well. K. George and Ethan Hammett. George, six catches, 83 yards, and two touchdowns. A couple of early catches on that game-winning drive uh, to kind of set them up in good shape. And Ethan Hammett had the big catch on that game-winning drive, about 20 yards as he set up the game-winning field goal. He had four catches, 81 yards, including that clutch one there at the end, and you can't get through this without talking about Garrett Murphy and his game-winning 32-yard field goal, which was crucial. Obviously won the game with four seconds left as he nailed that. Would have gone to overtime without that, but that wins the game, and in addition to that, had four and a half tackles on the defensive side of the football. One of their best players kind of at the linebacker position there for the Eagles defensively as well. So he's going to be big in this game as well on Friday night as he looks to make an impact in several facets of the game. So just an all-around good team win for Oak Mountain in the opening round of the playoffs. And for the Thompson Warriors, backup quarterback Zach Sims steps in, didn't skip a beat, didn't shy away from the moment. First half, he went 9 of 10, 176 yards and two touchdowns, so just one incompletion in that span. He knows he's got athletes. Coach Freeman knows he's got athletes. Get the ball out of his hands, into those hands of the athletes. Let them make some big-time plays, and it worked out. Justin Pegues, big-time performance there for the Warriors. Six carries, 98 yards, and a touchdown on the ground. Also had a 55-yard touchdown reception in that game as well. So if you can get the ball in those athletes' hands, Ryan Peppins, Justin Pegues, Jalen Ward, Brandon Franklin, you're going to have success as a Thompson quarterback, and Sims figured that out quickly in his first start last Friday night. So we'll see how he handles that with a spot in the semifinals on the line. Him and Justin Pegues, both big-time performances last week. And at Briarwood, going to need some big-time performances from these guys again this week there for the Lions against the number one team. But you look at what Christopher Vizina did, 19-24 passing, uh, 270 yards uh, through the air as well, and then also added 13 carries for 88 yards and had three touchdowns in that win uh, last week against Fort Payne. So a strong showing from him on the offensive side. And Luke Rebels, 13 carries, 54 yards, not his best showing of the year, but didn't have to be as special, but he did have two touchdowns on the ground and also added four catches for 25 yards. And the reason he didn't have to be as special, it took some pressure off of him, Nicholas Dyson, and what he was able to do at the receiver position. Like I said, six catches for 144 yards there for the Lions. That is a big time addition. That makes them a contender, a team that can truly threaten Clay Chalkville this week. So we'll see how he handles that in his second game 
there this week uh, against the Cougars. For the clear Eagles, what a special season for them. Head coach Jason Hamlin, year one, this team goes on to win seven games, finishes 6-0 and at home, makes it to the first round of the playoffs for the first time in the 6A classification, and then challenge the number five, number four team in the state in Spanish Fort, lose that game 30, uh, 41-31, to but it was a pretty close game throughout. Just a couple of every time clear would kind of get close, then you would have Spanish Fort's uh, answer with 14 points in a row, and that happened on a couple of occasions, which created a little bit of separation late in that football game, but a strong battle against a team that was in the state championship last year. One of the big reasons for that, Kobe Prentice, in a, uh, an incredible game yet again as he closed out his career there for the Eagles before heading to the University of Alabama, finished with 11 catches for 143 yards uh, in that game. A guy that we know, all of us know, is going to be an all-county first-team wide receiver this year and likely an all-state player as well. And Matthew Windham stepped up in a big way for the Eagles as well. Four catches, 32 yards, and two touchdowns. Also had a 50-yard kickoff return for a touchdown in that one. And Preston Stokes closed out his junior career, or junior season with a 21 for 34 performance, 251 yards and two touchdowns. Did have two interceptions, but taking on the number four team in the state, a very good defense, able to make some big time plays in that game for his team to keep that one close for the Eagles and cap off a, a truly special season and what they were able to do this year. Braden Marlowe at Pelham, lights out. He was all over the field against McGill Tulin last week and it was special to watch the defense in general for Pelham kept them in that game kept it a close matchup uh, and gave this team some chances but ultimately McGill just a little bit too much but Marlowe was kind of the highlight for the Panthers 11 tackles uh, in that game had a couple of tackles for loss as well as he was seemingly all over the field defensively for a very good Pelham defense this year, and that's something they're going to build off of. This offense played well at times as well. Will Lankford, Gabe Gamble, Darius Copeland, uh, Jake Fox, so many others stepped up, played well, a very strong offensive line, kind of inconsistent at times, but such good athletes. They've kind of set the tone and set the stage for this team moving forward. I expect this Collier team to build off of what they did defensively, especially this year, uh, as well as look up to the example set by those other guys. I think this is going to be a very good Pelham football team moving forward under head coach Tom Causey. And at Helena, Richie Busby also doing remarkable things there for the Huskies. Two region championships in the last three years, top two finishes in their region the last three years in a row. And Jordan Washington, sophomore running back, he was the stud this year for the Huskies. And he's going to be back for a couple more seasons, so get used to it. 24 carries, 201 yards, and four touchdowns to close out uh, his sophomore season. And he, like I said earlier this year, a four-week stretch where he went over 1,000 yards in just four weeks, and he's had several games with 200-plus yards. So a guy that you're going to see mentioned with some postseason accolades this year. And Connor Pugh kind of led the defense for the majority of the season. He finished with two, uh, nine, tack or nine tackles, two sacks, two tackles for loss there defensively for the Huskies uh, in their first-round loss to Baldwin County last Friday night and we can't close the SCR Stars of the Week segment out without mentioning Joseph Anderson one last time as the Bulldogs do fall to the number nine team in Jackson in the first round of the playoffs but Anderson 28 carries 207 yards and a touchdown there for the Bulldogs another guy that you're going to see mentioned a lot in the coming weeks with postseason awards and what he was able to do at the 4A level just truly remarkable one of the best running backs in the state regardless of classification this season so that does it SCR stars of the week done for now we'll get back to it next week with two big matchups we'll see who all stands out uh, with us down to three teams now so we've got some of the best athletes in the state playing this coming Friday night I'm sure we're going to have some good names to talk about uh, this coming week as well on next week's uh, SCR Stars of the Week segment. But for those that we just mentioned, it was your last time. And for those that we mentioned throughout the season that didn't get mentioned on this show, fantastic stuff from you all this season. It was great covering all of you. I enjoy it thoroughly. I try to give you as much recognition as I can uh, just because I know that this area right now is a hotbed for talent. And it's been overlooked for far too often. And now we're starting to see the coaching, the athleticism of the players, and these athletes stepping up, making big-time plays. We want as many to get opportunities at the next level as possible. So uh, keep sharing your tapes, keep sharing your stats, uh, and all that. We love to see it. We love to give you recognition, continue to work hard. And for those that we'll see next year, we'll see you next year. For those that are going on to bigger and better, better things, good luck with everything in your future.
Well, that does it for this week's Shelby County football show from Thompson High School. We'll be right back here in a few days, Friday night, a big, big playoff night here at Warrior Stadium as the Warriors are going to play host to Oak Mountain in a rematch in Class 7A Region 3. So going to be a fun battle here, going to be a fun battle out at Clay Chalkville. Number one Clay Chalkville hosting number five Briarwood. Briarwood always such a well-coached physical team, great defensive play that they rely on. That one should be a very good battle as well. Would be cool to see a tight one, possibly a Briarwood upset in that game uh, with the tradition of both of these teams that are very, very well coached right now as well. So looking forward to seeing what both can do there and the possible state championship ahead for the winner of that matchup. Same here between Oak Mountain and Thompson. The winner of this one, if they get Hoover again, Thompson lost to Hoover by three, going to be motivated. Oak Mountain lost to Hoover by seven. This year lost to him by three in the quarterfinals last year, lost to him in a tight game in the regular season last year as well. So the winner of this game, if they do get Hoover, going to have a huge motivation and redemption factor there if they get to the semifinals. So we're guaranteed one. Glad we get to see one team again in the semifinals here from this matchup as well. So just going to be a fantastic night of high school football here. Despite being down to just three teams, you couldn't ask for a better situation than the matchups that we're going to have. So it's going to be a blast. I'll be out here with our pregame show, Shelby County pregame show, live from Thompson before that game on Friday night here for our game of the week. Until then, that's going to do it. Hope you all have a good week. Thank you for tuning in throughout the season uh, and to this show. Look forward to seeing you on Friday night on Facebook Live uh, with the pregame show. But until then, that's going to do it from here at Thompson High School.